Hello, welcome back to City Planner Place, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And for the longest time, this area that is very close to downtown and very close to our future nature preserve has not developed. And you might wonder why. You might just assume, well, you know, I just missed it. <laughs> That's maybe part of it. But it opens up an opportunity to talk about something. Why are there areas that are so prime for development that don't develop sometimes? Well, let's first examine this. So you can see this area right here, even though it's undeveloped, has fairly high land value for what it is. In fact, it's higher than some of the land in our industrial area. So this is Robin Square and it has 39 cells per meter. When we look at other areas, well, we can see that it's roughly half of that after the development of the land. So that's pretty impressive. So why did this develop? Well, there are a number of reasons. There could have been a landowner that was unwilling to annex into the city. Uh, there could have been speculation that occurred here. This could have been townlands that didn't get brought in. Whatever the reason, it is now ready for development. And it's a great opportunity because it offers completely unobstructed views of the ocean. And we're gonna take advantage of those views because there's been a group that wants these sorts of views because they have a very, very special building that they want to build in the community, a Buddhist temple. So we are going to work on developing this area and build a Buddhist temple as an extension of Plaza Rancho Viejo Park. So this is going to be an interesting area to develop for a number of reasons. First of all, we've got this rail corridor, which is a pretty significant buffer. We also have a number of offices that have been developed here without any regard for future connectivity. And <laughs> we've got fires, which is normal here. So we, we've got some issues. Uh, so we're going to need to do something to make this more attractive, because if we don't have some sort of connectivity over here, this becomes a gigantic uh, disconnected mess of an area. So to develop this, understanding how valuable this land is, the city of Verde Beach is going to work with the rail operators to bury this and raise up this collector, get rid of all of these tunnels, redo a bunch of tunnels, very costly project and one that they only would do because they anticipate that this area will make up for it. So this would be potentially a tax increment financing project. I don't know. To make this work, there would be a lot, most likely grants, truthfully, uh, from the federal government to be able to take this kind of project on. Considering a lot of these, these rail corridors are privately owned, it would be a really big win for the rail operators to get any federal funding for this project. So it's going to be an, uh, an interesting project. But before we get into it, I do want to talk about some things that I've done in between episode 70 and now. So I had a stream and as part of that stream, we went through and did a few things here. And then after the stream, I did a few more things because there were some air issues that cropped up after the most recent game update. So in the stream, went through and updated all these parking lot assets to orient them correctly. There was a comment that was pointed out in episode 70. It was a good one. That the orientation of these parking lots was simply wrong and you had to drive through parking spaces to get into the aisle. So we changed all of those. Also changed this entryway to add more lanes. So this is overbuilt. It's six lanes. The reason why is if we have four lanes, this outside or the inside lane here ends up being left only. You can loop back onto the highway rather than having a dual turn lane right here. So uh, that was something that I cared about because you can see now we're getting a much better traffic flow. We're able to get vehicles in both lanes to, to come in and out of here. So a big benefit it doesn't really solve the traffic issues here unfortunately because of just how severe and significant they are uh, but i think it's going to hold it steady so when we take a look our traffic flow is about 84 percent which is just about where i began at the beginning of the stream but it's very predictable very very predictable so we'll take that as a win i've also fixed some of the trees that disappeared with the update as well so this grass here disappeared um, some of these trees got it all fixed and we renamed the airport MIA, even though it's funny, is Miami's call code. So VBI, Verde Beach International Airport, is not used anywhere. So we can use it. And one of the great things that we, about redoing this is we're able to add some lights and uh, 
get it looking pretty good at night. So I'm feeling good about that. So the other thing that we did, first there's a, there was a road here that I missed. Uh, we went along some of these roads. So this is ocean. We've added this California palm, which looks absolutely spectacular. And then in some of these other corridors, we've added, I believe this is a, a date palm and then coconuts on some other roads as well. So quite a bit of uh, little stuff, you know, like right here again, coming through and we heavily detailed this area right here near the Hamilton experience. So bringing in all of those new assets that Mr. Ma uh, Mr. Mason put together really brings this area to life. Really like it, really, really like it. So hope you do as well. The other thing that we did, oh, oh we uh, watched as the world burned. Now, part of me thinks I should have left that because we need to redevelop this at some point, but we'll, we'll fix it for the time being. Uh, the other major thing that we did is we went through our transit options and we modified some of the routes. So what you'll see now is that we have bendy buses and double-decker buses uh, where the, there was some overcrowding. We did the exact same thing for our metros and our trains. So you see that for the metro, we have uh, especially we'll sort it by passengers airport Hamilton which is the line that goes basically underground and, and comes over here we now have this high capacity Metro and effectively what that does is ensure that we're not passing anyone by even though there's hundred and seventy six passengers here we've got space left on this vehicle we're gonna pick them all up we adjusted our vehicle count on, on these routes as well same thing for the trains and we named all of our trains. We now have the Banana Line, which goes out to Banana Heights, named after Banana Man. So doing very good here. Feeling very good about the direction that we've taken the city, but we've got a lot of work today. And I'm excited to do something that is not Airports DLC or another project. I wanna build a neighborhood. And this is the neighborhood that we're gonna build. So the very first thing that we need to do, first of all, there is some train stuff happening here. We're gonna to wanna to take a look at that eventually. But what we wanna look at first is the height here because this is gonna be a problem right off the bat. I can tell you that this is going to be a low point right here. We've also got some significant issues. We've got kind of a donut here. And if you'll recall way back, I can't remember how long ago it was at this point, we actually stole soil from here for the airport. So <laughs> that is why we have a dip. We could fill that in, but I think that we are going to just deal with the ramifications of our decisions. But over here, we are gonna fill in just a bit. I'm gonna take care of that right now before we start planning. Okay, and you can see that there are some terrain challenges here. It, it wouldn't be a bad idea to come through here and flatten this all out just a little bit. Just, uh, it's not something that, you know, in reality would be a, a, a site by site thing, but when we're developing a big neighborhood like this, we know that we're gonna have some significant issues uh, with the way that the game handles this. So we can we can hold some of that off just by, by upfront working with the terrain a bit. You can see we can get really extreme with it if we want, coming through and sloping our terrain. And I like that we've made it just a bit more predictable. Uh, so we'll go with that. So the very first thing we're going to do is, is work on our train lines. Oh, <laughs> and I just spoke too soon. Very first thing we're going to do is add a water pipe here. Apparently I missed it. So we are going to get that added. So let's sever this connection here. We are going to get rid of this for the time being, make everyone very sad. And I'm gonna dezone this area right here. We're gonna do a lot of work right here. We're gonna pull this train back and push these ones underground. So if we take a look at what our tracks are doing, this is our passenger rail. It runs exactly underneath this freight rail, which is going to be a limiting factor for us. So let's pull this back. I'm gonna pause this for just a moment. And we'll just extend this out. We'll have our angle on. Well, we can actually turn everything up. Pull it through, and then we'll go over 12, pop it up. There we go. So we can work with this. Maybe that's a little bit steeper than I'd like it to be. Let's get that fixed. There we go. I think we can work with that. Well, that train can't, but <laughs> you and I can. So the next thing, we've got some interesting things going on here. So we've got it looks like a one-way yeah one ways coming through here this one going coming from the airport this one going to it 
So we are going to need to keep that in mind. So we're going to pause this again and get rid of everything basically between here and here. So let's pop underground. Well, actually, let's 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 get this bending. So I think it's it's completely acceptable to have these bending fairly rapidly around here. You're coming out of this uh, out of this area where you expect the trains to go a bit slower. So not a huge deal that they're being asked to go a little bit slower. And then we'll come down here. Twelve. Actually, we can't. We've got to go forward just a bit. Or if we can go about, if we can go 12. And then we're going to pull this through. What I'm seeing is that this angle is not quite right. So that is why it's not lining up the way that we would hope. We've got to get that fixed. Okay, so I just decided to use the curved road tool. We'll see if that improves things for us or if we're gonna have the exact same issues. Much better. And from here, we'll get rid of this and try to drop down. There we go. So this is gonna be a little rough, but we're gonna make it work. There we go. So now it's our directionality that's gonna be our concern. So this is supposed to go out. This, the opposite, should be good. Let's see if this runs. Now, interestingly, it doesn't look like any trains are using that center track. It just may be that this isn't all that necessary of a bypass. You're not coming out here unless you've got something to do. I'm going to keep an eye on that, but I'm not overly concerned. I think it's more of a utilization concern than anything. No reason to utilize it because like this, if this went straight through, I'd be concerned, but it stopped here. So very good. And now we're forcing all of this traffic onto a one way. Perfect. Let's go ahead and upgrade this collector. And I actually, I want to line this up with this road here. We don't have many opportunities to make new connections. So let's go ahead and make one when we have the opportunity. And then from here, we are going to use our curved road tool to connect right into our existing collector. Beautiful connection there. Let's dezone this. We'll worry about that later. So this, uh, one of, another nice thing about this connection here is that we're going to use this as the place where our collector comes in here. And I'm thinking that we need to have some sort of collector connection to this other collector. The problem is we've got all this existing development and I don't want to level it. So what we're going to do is create a collector couplet right here with these two roads up to this collector, which should form a nice connection through here and some connectivity that we don't really have. That will allow some circulation to occur through this area that we wouldn't otherwise get. So it's very important that we do this. So with that in mind, what we are going to do, wow, all sorts of backup there. That's wild. Slow this down. Don't need to move at warp speed. We will need to look at our terrain. Yeah, we've got, this is going to be a tough, tough movement. So we're going to have to use a slope terrain tool and we'll get that to a medium width. Pop that up here right mouse click left click pull that right up the side so i'm going to actually start with this straight connection down the hill and then we're going to curve this in use our curved road tool perfect 90 there so we've got some things happening here it's a little weird but it'll work and let's get this downgraded to the right kind of road there we go perfect so i will be changing out some of these roads we're going to want these to look a little bit nicer. We're going to use some of our new trees. We'll leave that here for now because we should focus on the rest of this area. We're going to master plan this. We're going to plat this out. Imagine that the person who purchased this land has a plan for everything. And as a result, is master planning it all, selling it all to individual developers. I can't easily line this road up, but I can try my best to, to fudge it. So that's what we're going to do. So this road it's not quite straight. So the, the very best way to do this would be to just eliminate all the things that are in our way. <laughs> just, just go for it. I think I'm going to look at a tree and see if I can line them up. So that seems like it's pretty straight there. 
there we go. I just want to mirror that view. And this is my, the best I can do. So I'll turn angle on to figure out where this should connect up. And then again, eyeball it a bit. There we go. So these I really care about because I want that visual continuity. We really care about the visual aesthetic here. And so much of this is going to be non-standard. Let's just standardize what we can. And I do want to clear the trees out from here, particularly in this area, we're going to do something special. Okay, nice and clear. So we need to work on our collector couplet and that's going to start right here. So we're just going to pull this through and I wish that we could do what we did over here, but I don't think it's quite as important. So over here, we really don't have any roads bisecting. I think there's, yeah, down here. And that is for the continuity of our bike network and a place to put our metro over here. We're going to just send this through. Potentially won't be quite as nice, but it'll do the trick. And then I'll send this out about 20. We're going to do the exact same thing over here, but we're going to deviate just a bit. And this road's really important, and I'll, I'll show you why in a, in, a, in a minute. So what I want to do here is mirror this road up here, if I can. So I'm going to use my freeform tool and try to find those road guidelines. And then we'll bring that on down, let's say right there. And what I'm going to do is just slightly bend this road. So let's pull this over here. Look at our terrain heights. Yeah, we can we can get away with that. And I might do one better. Yeah, that's a that's that's a bit rough. And now I need to find a nice place for these to join. I'm gonna pull this back just a little ways and see if I can make that connection. And then we can bring our collector all the way up to here. And that is going to do really well for us. So what we're going to do is pop through here. I'm going to start upgrading these so that we can see our collector. So this, we want that to naturally turn over. We'll reverse the directionality of that. And now you can see that they get forced this way and we'll pull them right down. And I wish I understood why the directionality is what it is. I don't know if there's something that I'm doing that causes the directionality to, to be what it is, but Never quite figured that out. If you know, please give me an idea in the comments. Tell me, give me the, give me the secret because <laughs> I don't, I don't know what it is. And then we're going to upgrade this. All of my collectors through here, I, I'm going to just upgrade these and we'll have them be tree lined. And this is going to be something that as I redevelop and develop in the downtown area, I want to slowly bring these tree lined streets in. So I'm going to go right down this street and I'm curious. Why don't we up, pop in? We'll get our names on. There we go. So I will be changing these trees later. This is not going to be a collector, but it's a very important road nonetheless. So I'm going to upgrade this at least till about here and we'll have to see where our neighborhood ends. So right here, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. There's not gonna be an easy way to connect into this. So what we're gonna do is create a little suburban office park of sorts but before we do all of that I, I do want to go through i mentioned that this is going to be one whole neighborhood we're going to do that right here currently it's called robin square but i think we can do better let me know your ideas for this neighborhood uh, i'm going to give a little bit more of the story in just a minute about the neighborhood and maybe that'll help you think of a name but i want to know what ideas that you have there we go now here, we're gonna really respect our terrain, respect the, respect the topography and make sure that we're not doing anything that really disrupts this area. Apparently that node really disrupts this area. <laughs> so <laughs> I wonder, wow, yeah, that raised everything up. That stinks. We're gonna pop that down. We're gonna call a mulligan on all of that. And we're gonna make the terrain respect us. So we'll just pull this up just a little bit. Pop this down, go over 10 and come here. Yeah, that is terrible. So <laughs> let's, let's do a little bit more to get this to be a little bit closer to what we would anticipate in terms of heights. And that's gonna mean that we have to raise this up. So that is a lot better. Problem is it has created some really steep slopes for us 
And even this now is, is pretty rough. We're gonna move this. This is the height of realism here as we relocate things for the stake of slopes. <laughs> so what can you do? What can you do? Over here, I'll pull this out and then we'll shimmy this back just a little bit. So I don't want to completely cul-de-sac this if I don't have to. So what I want to do is pull a couple of roads through here. Ideally, I think we would reuse this one. So we'll do that. We'll come in 10 and then we'll get our terrains back up. I'm going to go over. I guess it's all about the same here. We'll go over 15 and come back. And then through here, we definitely want to have our terrain view on. We can run this again. And what we're going to do is just kind of create a, a circle through here. And you can see we have disrespected our terrains. <laughs> so we are, are dealing with some of the ramifications of that. This will be a tricky spot, but we'll make it happen. And we'll have a slight connection through here. And then I'm going to look at the grades. Yeah, we've got a dip through the middle. And I said I didn't want to do all that much with grading here, but we're going to pull this up just a little bit because we can improve this even if just slightly. Ideally, I think I'd bump that up. And then around here, we're going to need to really be careful with our zoning because we don't want to completely disrupt the hillside. I might take a bit of soil, kind of clear things out. And I don't know what we're going to call this area, but it's, it's kind of a, a bowl. Maybe we'll call it the bowl. So I do feel like we've done our best to work with the terrain here. We've certainly tempered it, but it's still very similar to the artificial uh, terrain that we created over here. And if we take a look, it's a bowl still. This would be a great place for a detention basin or a retention pond. But since we can't really do that in vanilla without, you know, I guess we could just fill it in. Um, short of that, we'd have to turn it on and off. It's not, there's not really a good way to do it without making it a river. So we are going to develop it. I would think that because of how much this drops down, it would naturally be, you know, kind of a, a detention basin for this entire area, a regional basin potentially. And while we're over here, let's get some water pipes underneath our roads where they belong. Okay, so we are going to add more roads to this area. This is not good enough, obviously. We get, we're going to want to do a little bit more. We're going to try to mirror what we've done in the past. So again, have our angle on, figure out where we would connect up. We're not going to be exactly there, but we'll come close. And then from there, I think we're going to start deviating, doing our own thing and trying things that work well for this particular area. So what's going to work well, because we have this bit of a ridge here that, that formed when we started some of our projects over here, I think that we're going to run a road along here. One tile too close. And because we have our angle, we can get rid of these roads now. Pull this straight along all the way down. That's actually a bit of a rough angle there. We're getting very close to the train tracks, so we're going to need to angle that in just a little bit. In fact, the way that I'll handle that is I'll pull this back. We'll pull this up, connect this here, and then we'll make our connection right at this corner. No one will ever know, except for you, me, and uh, anyone else who's watching this. <laughs> Besides that, no one else. All right, so that's a nice connection now. And we can finish our final connection here. And then we want to look with an eye for saleable land, because any developer coming through here is going to go, well, I can't leave these gigantic spaces in the middle open. That's not going to work for me. I can't, I can't make money doing that. So they'll come through and divide this further. And then I do want some sort of boundary here. So I'm going to look at our terrain and form that boundary. We'll use our curved road tool. So we can start with a straight road and then curve that right in with our curved road tool. Okay, so there we go. I like that. So this is the area that we're working with. And you'll, you'll notice that I skipped right here. The main reason that I skipped adding any roads through here besides the collector is we are going to be building a Buddhist temple here. So this is something that the uh, 
the, some of the Asian immigrants to the community have been longing for a Buddhist temple for the entire city. And this is an ideal location because of the proximity to the train station. So it makes it possible for uh, residents from across the community to come here and worship. So let's go through here. We'll grab that temple complex. And I, I want to make sure that we're, we're doing our best to center this so that when you're looking and you're at the temple, you have an excellent view of the water. Now, I'm not going to be able to perfectly center this. You can see it's, I get one option or the other. The only way that I could potentially improve that would be to get rid of that road and I could get real tricky and just use angle and road length. Actually, just angle maybe. Nope, didn't work and that's okay. I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to frustrate myself when I'm trying to make perfect the goal and you know, let's not do that. It doesn't need to be perfect. It needs to be pretty good. And what you can see now is when you're right here, you've got this view of the water. This feels like a fitting place for this amenity. So what we're going to do is make sure that we don't obstruct these views at all. We are going to frame this road. Again, another important corridor. We'll frame this and I think we're going to cut off the road access here. And instead of having road access, we will have a path so as to have as little interruption in this view corridor as possible. And these are the sorts of things that I think are really important to think about when you're, when you're building your city, because these are the sorts of things that are considered in reality as well. And I think we can connect up to the station right here. I might need to just go with this, <laughs> this generic path connection. That'll do the trick. This one might be more difficult. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. So let's give this another go. I need to try my best to keep it away from there. There we go. So it's a, it's a little steep. We'll need to hide that. Some lumpies and bumpies. We'll need to hide those a bit, but I, I have full faith in our ability to do that. So I'm going to make this connection there. And now it feels like it's a part of this area. So let's talk about land use a bit. This is going to be a predominantly residential area, but we are going to have a town center of sorts in this area right here. Great access to everything, not too close to some of these rather noxious uses. We have, you know, our uh, disaster response unit right here. We have a couple of, of uh, pumps for flooding, and then we have a bus station and a disaster shelter. Great things to have nearby, but not necessarily something that we're super excited to look at every day. So we're going to keep our commercial uses and some of our core city services over here. City services being things like the police station, fire department, postal service, things of that nature, a library. We should take a look at what our coverage is like, because I, I assume that we have poor coverage. And I assume that if I place it here, yeah, it'll, it'll extend actually right in the center. So if I go too far down, you don't get it all the way. If I go too far up, now I'm on my collector. If I put it right on this road, you can see that it covers this entire neighborhood. So we'll focus everything along this street here and that will improve things for us. So let's go ahead and get that started. So I'm guessing we need everything. We get fire, police, the, uh, elementary school. We need one of those. High school, we've got one right there, so I think we'll try to pull that as far over here as we can. Elementary school, we'll do the same thing. There's one right here, so we'll pull that through. There's no good way to get to that elementary school. There's no roadway connectivity. I guess right here? It's not great. And then university, we're, we're covered. We've got the, the good old institute, with a little annex right here in the Oak Nature Reserve. Uh, public library coverage throughout the entire city is poor, so it's this is an excellent opportunity to, to bring that into this area and do a little bit more with it. So that's what we're going to start out with. We'll start out with our core services. And the one I want to place first is going to be our post office. So that should make Doc happy. And it makes me happy as well. The reason why I want to start out with this particular asset is it only looks good on one particular corner. Ah, oh, look at that. It is not going to do what I want. This is one of the problems of not lining things up perfectly is you end up with some of this craziness. So let's see, I wonder if I pull through some of these other amenities, if things improve. Here's another idea. So it is really focused on the wrong corners. 
if I upgrade these temporarily, I should be able to place these where I want. It's kind of like using the zoning tool. Ah, I did the wrong one. And I may just fix this road. That might be the very best way for me to handle this. Or we'll pull it back one tile. A little off, off skew there, but I think it's gonna, the, the result is gonna be a better connection. Yeah, that's significantly better. This is gonna be an important street through here, so we're gonna upgrade this one as well to have trees. So let's go ahead and get the rest of our services here. And let's actually, I was gonna place our health, but the most difficult asset to place is going to be our library. So we will place that first. Again, we're gonna focus on this area down here, even if that means we're pulling it through maybe a little bit differently than I would prefer. I'd love to center this a little bit more. That's good. And we'll leave this whole block to the library. And then we will look at our fire coverage and our police coverage and a small clinic, which will not fit. <laughs> so this is, this is, this will be good enough. And we can have this here as well. I'd actually prefer to, maybe we'll sneak this away just a little ways. There we go. I'm going to get rid of some of these and I want to give this area some thought. I'm curious. We've got our new parking lot asset and I think there might be some value in adding that over here. It is kind of a, a downtown area for this. I can't do more than that one, but that's sufficient. Should provide connectivity to all these areas and then we can have some commercial flanking this. And we're gonna do that for this entire area right here. This will be our little commercial corridor core thing right there. <laughs> so there we go. So unfortunately we have no connections here. Uh, and I, I, I'm gonna pause this for a moment as we're waiting to get the rest of this zone because I wanna think about the things that we need in this area. So. A school, I mentioned that there's no great school availability over here, and I think we have an opportunity to take advantage of our proximity to some of these parks. So we'll place our school right here, and we're gonna have a playground right next to that. And the thought is they could have school pilgrimages right across the street. We can put a park entrance over here, and they could just, you know, that could be part of the curriculum going into the nature reserve. So. Go ahead, pop through here, add in a small playground. I think the large playground's too big, just a little bit. Actually, if we re if we rotate this, the height of reality, uh, not satisfied with the way that your playground's fitting in, just rotate your school. That's nice, that is really nice. What a great amenity for this area. We also need a high school, and the high school's gonna have a lot going on. So we'll pop in, we'll grab our high school, and I'm gonna place that fairly close because for the exact same reasons. So we'll place that right here, center that in the block, and we're gonna add a whole bunch of stuff over here. Uh, so this is not just neighborhood serving, but also serving the school. We'll have a couple of basketball courts, and then we'll come into our health tab, and we need to add a number of things. I think a pool would fit well. It's Faraday Beach, you can be outside year round. A gymnasium as well. We could obviously go even further, but this is a good start. And with that, I'm gonna get rid of some of the landscaping around here and think just a bit more on that. That's, is that part of the asset? Weird. I do not like that at all. Yeah, that is, wow. So weird. I think it just looks totally out of place. Well, I'm gonna to have to get over myself, I guess, because there's not much I can do about it. But I am gonna move this over one tile so that we give a little bit of space for some paths through here. And I didn't do a very good job of that in general, so maybe we'll move this over even further and give some room for some paths. And we'll do uh, the, you know, the excellent work of removing every single tree in this block, because you know, that's, that's always super desirable. Let's go through and add some paths through here. And I am gonna use this new park path, uh, this park path with decorations. It's not an asset that I was super enthusiastic about in the past, but now that you can change the trees, it completely transforms this asset into one of the very best paths in the game. Not only does it look gorgeous, but it also self levels, which is something that it could, it could always do. 
something that made it very nice to have, but it's even better now. So that was a lot of trouble, but sometimes you just gotta play with the nodes to make everything work. So let's see where else I can sneak through some paths, give lots of options for getting around here. Makes a ton of sense to me. And now we can fence this in, give our students a bit of privacy as they're walking through their campus. And then I just added a few fences through there to give it a, a, a feeling of a, a, bit, a bit more privacy. Through here, I'm gonna remove that and we're gonna fence in this part of the school that is closest to the road. We'll have our angle on that should keep us nice and straight and it won't. So <laughs> we're gonna turn that off. And I guess we could snap this to that path. There's not really a great value in that. In fact, I'd almost like to sever that path so that people aren't walking through the elementary school. There we go. That's gonna, that'll do the trick. So from here, I'm gonna add a couple more parks, but not a ton. So I, I mentioned that there is kind of the, the Asian theme over here. So we're gonna add a couple of Japanese gardens just on the outside of this area. And then obviously we need a dog park. It is what every single developer does, adds to their neighborhood. To, uh, to make sure that everyone's feeling good about it. We'll add a couple of, we'll add one dog park and then one small park. If we can, this will be a tough location. No, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make this as nice as I would like it to be. We're a little bit too long. That's probably a bit too close to the train tracks. Maybe we can fix this with a fence. And truthfully, this fence isn't a bad idea anyway with how urban this area is going to be. There we go. A nice little divider, and we'll add the exact same thing over here. There we go, and it'll keep people from falling down there as well. So for here, I really wanna mimic that pattern that we have down here of the X. So what I'm gonna do is I don't wanna to snap to this. I'm gonna go up just a little bit, and we'll add our connection. I'm gonna actually use our generic paths because they'll destroy a whole bunch and that's fine. So we'll come through here. That's pretty close. And then actually I'm, I'm, I'm regretting this. Let's go through. We'll add a connection through here first and then we'll think about this one. And this one's not going to work. So I guess we're just going to need to accept a little bit of a lack of symmetry. So there we go. So over here, I do want to extend some of what we've been doing. Over here, we've got a corridor of commercial, and we're going to extend that out and flank this area with it. Back here, we're going to reserve some of this land for future expansion of some of these uh, utility campus type uses. And we're going to pull through our residential. Along here, we're going to increase so I'll actually bump it up right here even. We're gonna increase our density near the train track. The idea being this this could support it. That we could allow, or some, some folks who live here could walk to this train and get to downtown very quickly. So we'll bump up the density here and then scale back. Everything will be pretty low rise over here. And pretty much exclusively single family homes. So over here, I want to have offices, but we've been doing a lot of fencing and we should continue that because here we should use it to block our zoning. And in fact, why don't we block it along this road as well? Okay, so I'm blocking the zoning here for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm just not truly all that interested in having development along this road. We could have a, a, a nice forested entryway into here. Two, there's a lot of access just in roads coming off here, or maybe not a lot, but but there's some, so let's just keep it, keep it simple in this area. And of course this fence I added is gonna give me trouble. So we will need to get rid of that and we'll just fence this all the way down. Nothing along this collector, which is perfect. And up here, I think we're gonna also fence cause we don't want to inadvertently zone and have a whole bunch of homes popping up above 
what will be some office towers. It'll also help keep the, 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 the high schoolers from diving down here and taking a tumble. So, winds all around. So, what we're gonna do down here now that we've got this set up, first of all, we do have water. So we're just gonna zone this. Oop, couple more fences. Interesting, I, I zoned a one millimeter fence. <laughs> so, there we go. Now we've got this little bowl area here. Let's go ahead and we're going to zone this. And we'll just name this the bowl right off the bat. I, li I like that name. I really do. Maybe it's a dumb name, but I like it. <laughs> so. Okay, and then over here, I wanna think about the types of buildings that we're allowing. So I started zoning and I immediately paused it because I think it would be great to have some self-sufficient buildings over here and uh, some organic and local produce. This is right near the nature reserve. So why not promote that in this area? We're also going to uh, do whatever we can to boost the land values. You can see we're already at 53, expanding this out and having a bit of development. Let's have some high tech housing and everything else is probably okay. You know, maybe this free Wi-Fi policy would be good in the downtown area. Interesting. Well, we should be good now. I just wanna go through here and double check our zoning. Looks like we have a nice thoughtful zoning policy through here. And over here, we'll have one more home. There we go, we'll get this running. I'm gonna speed this up a little bit so we get some of this development occurring. While we take a look at our traffic signals, we need to prioritize some of what's happening here. So this road, for instance, should now be a priority road. So should our collector, our collector couplet, and we'll make Murray Avenue also a priority road. So let's look at our junctions. And that's the main reason I'm doing this, is I want junction control. Of course, I've added some inadvertently to the highway. Always gotta pay attention to that. And then here, we'll go through and just click these off. Now this collector, collector, will keep the signal. Here, we're gonna turn it off with the local roads. Shouldn't be any issues back here. So we're good. I don't know what's going on here. It's like we have a couple of arbitrary stop signs. We'll just get rid of those. And over here, we're gonna, again, Spend a little bit of time on these. So this, I want this to be a free flow movement. So I'm going to take all signalization off from there and then make sure that we're looking good. In this area, there's a couple of stop signs that just popped up. Don't need those. We do need a signal here and here, a stop sign here, and then we should be good. Looking very good. And a couple more spots where we probably should have a little bit of water. Now that this is growing a bit, I do want to focus on the landscaping on the roads. So what I'm thinking, we're, we're, we're not using the old trees anymore. We're done with that. I think that you're all done with it. I'm done with it. I really love these generic date palms. I think they feel really regal. Maybe that's the wrong word, but I'm going to use it. I'm going to pull these through on this road. They look absolutely spectacular. When you look at these, they just really fill this in they make it feel very tropical so I love that we're gonna do that all the way through here on our four lane collector on our two lane collector couplet we're gonna go with these coconuts so I like the way these look but I've never been to a place like Hawaii I'm curious in a in a place that's humid like that uh, do you would you see if you live in Hawaii do you see coconut trees used as street trees or is that just exclusively landscaping? Uh, I, I wonder, because if you think about it, these trees could potentially drop coconuts on cars and that would be dangerous. <laughs> so, and that here with this being kind of our local main street, I'm gonna put these California, uh, California palms, fan palms, I think that they're beautiful. They really make a pedestrian oriented area feel spectacular so we'll go through those here we're gonna do the same thing in these pedestrian paths you can upgrade these i think that looks just spectacular this will be what we use to line this little park area and then here we are allowing some development but we want that visual continuity the view is obstructed from back here so really this is just a nice place to live not necessarily uh, a super attractive view area. Along the park, I'm thinking that we wanna go with these young lindens. 
to make the transition into our nature reserve feel a little bit better. This is going to be a totally different type of nature reserve than our previous one. And maybe it'll hi highlight some of the trees that also grow in this area outside of just palm trees. So I think it's going to be a really nice change of, uh, of pace for this area. I'm just going to pull these palms all the way down till we get to sunset. There we go. Look at that. Let's just pop in at street view. Look at this. This just feels so much better. I don't know how fast 50 kilometers per hour is, but it feels like a lot. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. So I guess 50 kilometers is approximately 31 miles an hour. That sounds reasonable. Truthfully, it's probably slower than we have it in many areas here for better or worse. So now that we have this, I'm going to get rid of some of these old palm trees and we need to decorate some of these areas. In particular, I want to decorate around this temple area. This is a very important uh, area for the city as a whole. And uh, I think that they would recognize that this is something that would take this entire community decades potentially to raise money for so and it's 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 going to be a landmark of not just that community but a verde beach as a whole so as a result we're going to give it the care it needs and deserves so i want to layer the colors a little bit so we have the really light green of the bamboo a little bit uh, kind of a mid-tone for uh our palm tree and we're going to have some of these live oaks which honestly it's one of my new favorite assets anyway they just they look so nice so i'll add just a couple of these through and then we'll add some purples and then my favorite the tall grass cluster okay and this is all about the street level so i want to come down and make sure that we haven't missed anything so this feels very remote, like a remote part of the city, even though we're right here in the middle of it. Hides it gives a, a sense of privacy back there. And that's the whole goal. Privacy. It's a place that's not open to the public, but we can all observe it from the outside and admire it. That is really, I like that a lot. Now we've got this park space here and we've got some lumpies and bumpies and we're going to take care of that. We're going to fall back to some old favorites. So obviously, whenever we have some cliffs like this, we can come through here. And I wonder, we're dipping down. We're raising up, it looks like. I wonder if we can improve that at all. Let's call a little mulligan. The height of realism here is we call a mulligan on the train track because we don't like how it looks. So I believe I used the high speed rail viaduct, which came in the trains and bridges content creator pack. So I'm curious. Can I just connect this? Nope. <laughs> so uh, let's pop through here and look at our heights. So if I come through and I lower the height, now it should be a bridge all the way across. And here I'm going to grab my top terrain and slope this up to try to make it a little less terrible. <laughs> so we'll see how these both work. That one. So the train is better. That is pretty awful. We're going to need to fix the lumpies and bumpies here. Really don't like that. Let's take this back one more and see if I can just keep it up one unit. Interesting. So it's coming down to come up and I don't like that. I'm going to try my best. We'll pop this up one. Keep our angle on. That's better. No, it's not. <laughs> There we go. I think that looks a lot better. And maybe if we do the same thing over here, we can get rid of some of this crazy times. Nope, that didn't improve anything. So we're just going to have to live with a little bit of madness. And the way that we'll live with that is the way that we always live with that. We could either get real wild and start taking down a whole bunch of the towers, or we could be a little more pragmatic about it and just Cover it up. Now that's better. And I think we're going to even go one beyond that. We're going to throw in some of our new trees and create a bit of a barrier. So this, there would be a lot of noise here. And if we take a look, yeah, it's very loud. 
So let's use some trees to buffer this. And if we take a look at this, these are some of our new trees. It's a mixture of the live oaks and the horse chestnut. And that is just, that feels lush. It makes it feel like you're walking through, you know, kind of a forested area. It's so thick. That is beautiful. Mr. Mason, wow, like <laughs> this is just awesome. I love this. So let's focus on making this look a little bit better. And you can just take these flowers and at least on PC, you can really layer them heavily. And then we'll go with some bushes. So these bushes, you could separate them and try to space them. But I find that if you just really bring them close, they feel like a thick hedgerow. And that looks really nice too. Okay, now let's come through here and see what we see. And this is what I'm interested in. Look at this view from here. Really feels good. You get to see the trains, all of the activity. Look, you can get a view of the ocean depending on where you're at. See the trip, uh, the, 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 uh, the boats in the background. Just spectacular, just really outstanding. So I'm gonna extend this row of foliage on this side as well. It'll There's a, a bit of layering of heights here and this will, I guess, prevent some of that uncomfortable kind. And then through here, we're gonna do something totally different. And that is, I want this to feel like a forest. So let's just add a whole bunch through here. There we go. And again, it just feels really lush over here. Prevent some of the noise from the train. And uh, we've got some shadows from some of these buildings, but it's not so bad. I think we can deal. Now over here again, more of the oaks. Again, let's pop in at street view. Look at that. This library would be an awesome place to go. You could get your mail. Go to the library, come on down, I guess go to the police station. <laughs> That's what you're looking to do. Get some, uh, go to, go thrifting and then ha hit up a farmer's market right before I go to the hospital. <laughs> so yeah, good. It's a good spot around here. Let's again, give a little bit of delineation through here. We've given so much detail to this area. It'd be a shame not to continue that through. I just, I love this. This to me is such a huge update to the game because now you can fill in these areas and make them really come to life and feel like places that exist in the real world. And that to me is what makes the game special when you can do that. There we go. And then we have a couple more blocks and I'm just going to add a couple of trees through the blocks to make sure that they, they fill in. You kind of expect to see that. You know, generally you don't have large gaps and blocks like, like, like happens in the game. So it's a pretty good addition in my book. I don't know what's happening here for whatever reason, these homes are just not developing yet, but we'll add in some trees, cover up some of the gaps. There we go. So I do want to take a look at our little office area to see how this is doing. It's okay, but we've got to do a little bit of, of, uh, landscaping work here. It's always tough when you're working on these areas because you end up with these really sheer cliffs. That's fine. We can work around that. We'll make it look really good. We'll just pull it back a little ways, taper it off, and it'll ignore just how steep that train is. <laughs> and there we go. Then we'll pop through where we can. And you know, maybe it would have been better to take some of these areas and make the buildings a little bit smaller. We didn't do that, so this is what we have, and I think it's okay. The one thing that I do regret that I'm going to call a mulligan on is I didn't add any roads through here, which means we lost a lot of developable land. So there we go, that, that improves it some. And then again, we'll add some trees through here. Actually, I'll hold off on this. And we will remove all the trees in the cliff. Now that's one thing to me that is absolutely necessary. You're not going to see a whole bunch of palm trees growing on the cliffside like that. You might see a couple, but not not like not like it allows. 
And then we'll go with Old Reliable. So I know that I've been asked on a number of occasions why I do that. Uh, I add all of these, all of these little green weedy patches. I guess I'm not sure exactly what they would be called. And the main reason I do that is I don't like the cliff texture, but I've thought of the absolute perfect reason why I do it. And that's erosion control. So that's why I'm doing it now. <laughs> so, you know, we've got our, we've got our reasons. You know, and through here, we have all of this land, or all of these streets have no parking, or have parking and no, none of it's being used. I'm gonna add one more parking lot. I'm really in love with having my own parking asset that, that I created that I can feel comfortable bringing into the build. It was made by me, so I think I think I can still call it vanilla. So there we go. We'll add that here, and then we're gonna convert all of these roads to have trees. There we go. I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good about that. Okay, so let's pop in here and see how this feels. The Law Accounting Night Watch. It feels like a nice place to, to work. It's there's no way to get here besides driving, which stinks, but it's not a bad place to work. I'm I just I look at these old trees now and I just get irritated. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys feel the same way. They just they stick out like a sore thumb. So, with that, I think that we need to pop over here, take a look at the street one more time, and have a quick city tour. Okay, so night is coming and you can see the transition between the high density of downtown and the outskirts of downtown into what is, you know, a general urban area, more suburban in character and, and really an immigrant area as well. So I hope that, uh, I hope that you like this. This, this, this is uh, certainly more of a, a unique build. One of the things that I'm noticing here though, and we should take a look. We'll go a little bit later. Let's pop this on. Not very much light around the temple. And that is a little bit concerning from a safety standpoint. So we're gonna pop through here and let's see what we have in terms of lighting. I go with these liberal arts lighting. We'll see how this looks. So these are not well spaced at all in hindsight being 2020. I'd probably look at the trees and use those as my guide. But even at that, it still adds a bit of lighting to this area. I really wish that I could have some under tree lighting. I really like that architectural lighting. I think it adds a lot to an area. You see, we'll add in a street lamp. It's gonna add a couple through here. And let's see how this feels. I think it feels significantly safer. So as we come through here, you get to see some of those lights through there. Yeah, it just feels a little bit better. So just just the thing to think about as you're designing these areas, because safety, I mean, you can design for safety and that is making sure that you have lights. I know it's not something that we really think about a ton in city skylines, but it is a thing that we think about in reality quite often. So. I would encourage you, it's 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 a fun experiment. And you get to see the way these look at night and it just looks spectacular. You can see the areas where it's more urban, where there's more activity at night and the places where maybe people are resting and going to, and going to sleep. And the places where there is a gigantic inferno because it's Verde Beach, <laughs> which 
this is as good a place as any to leave it. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And uh, for the sake of this little tree, we'll, uh, we'll cut it off here, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.